So what is EV? In this lesson, we're gonna to get to grips with what exposure value is, or EV. On normal cameras and lenses, we have three dials to adjust. You may have heard of the term exposure triangle. The exposure triangle comprises of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. These three camera and lens controls work together to regulate the amount of light that makes it to the camera sensor, which are controlled by the aperture and shutter speed, and the sensitivity of the light on the sensor, known as digital gain or ISO. So these three dials all affect each other, and the goal is to create a mid-bright image. Using the internal light meter, this is where the term 18% gray comes from. Here we see that if we change from a small aperture like f32 to a large aperture like f1.4, this lets more light onto the sensor, so the image gets brighter. We also see that if we have a shutter speed of say a quarter of a second, this lets more light in versus a faster shutter speed like one over 8,000th of a second, which will make the image darker. Finally, we have ISO, and this is a digital gain of the light hit in the sensor. A low ISO value of 50 will not add a lot of gain to the image, versus an ISO of say 25,600. This would add a lot of electronic gain to the image, making it brighter. It's worth a note here that each part of the triangle has more side effects other than just making an image brighter or darker. For example, aperture. Having an aperture of f32, which has a small hole, might make the image darker, but also gives us a larger depth of field, meaning the person nearest to the camera and the landscape behind him in the background are both in focus. Conversely, if we set the aperture to f1.4, which is a very large hole and lets in a lot of light, we get a shallow depth of field. We can see only the person is in focus and the landscape behind them is blurred out, known as bokeh. A simple way of remembering this is if the F number is large, like F32, think of it like a bunch of letter Fs laid out on the floor. This means the length of the focus area or depth of field is large. Or if you have a small letter F, like F1.2, this means that you have a very small amount of Fs on the floor, meaning the depth of field is small or shallow. So the larger the F number, the larger the depth of field. So this way you don't have to keep remembering whether the hole is large or the hole is small and things like that. Next we have shutter speed. As we see, a slow shutter speed lets in more light than a faster shutter speed, which blocks more light, making the image darker. This also has an added effect, which is motion blur. The slower the shutter speed, the more blur in the image. The faster the shutter speed, the less blur, and would be used if taking a picture of fast moving subjects like flying birds or sports. In video, natural motion blur, which is what our eyes and brain perceive as natural, is double what the frame rate is. So for example, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to one over 48 or one over 50 if your camera can't do one over 48. Finally, we have ISO. This is an electronic amplification of the light hitting the sensor. Here we see that a low ISO is needed if there's a lot of light in the scene, like you're outside on a bright day or indoors with a lot of bright lighting. However, if the scene is dark like indoors without lighting or outside or in the evening or in low light, we need a higher ISO value to brighten the image. The trade-off is the higher the ISO value, the more digital noise and grain you'll get in the scene. And in photography, this isn't usually an issue, but for video, it's a huge issue as the noise and grain looks like moving noise and grain dust all over the video. So the rule of thumb is to keep ISO as low as you can to avoid visible grain. So now we're familiar with the exposure triangle. How does this involve the EV or exposure value? Well, when your camera looks at a scene, the internal light meter takes a reading and it looks like this. It usually goes from plus three to minus three with zero being what the camera sees as the right exposure. Again, the camera wants to expose bright things darker and dark things lighter to get that middle gray. And colors don't come into play here. It just looks at black and white shades. 
Now in full manual mode, it has no effect. But if you shoot in any other mode, like automatic, program, shutter, aperture priority, or manual mode with ISO, the camera will try to adjust your exposure by adjusting the aperture, shutter speed, or ISO, depending on what mode you're in. For example, if you're shooting in aperture priority, you get to pick the aperture you want, and that won't change. However, the camera will adjust the shutter speed to get what it thinks is correct exposure. Or maybe you shoot in manual with auto ISO. You might pick the aperture and shutter speed and they won't change, but the camera will adjust the ISO depending upon what it sees as you move the camera around. As we saw in the previous lesson, the camera doesn't always get it correct. So if your image is too bright, the camera will try to darken the image, hit that 80% mid gray value. However, this might make the subject too dark. In this image, the bird against the dark background. The camera adjusts the image to brighten the dark background, and in turn, the bird is overexposed. In this next scene, we see a person against a bright window, which is very bright. The camera might decide to darken the bright sky, making the man in front of the window appear underexposed. So this is when we can use EV, known as exposure value, but it's also known as exposure compensation on other camera systems. And we can use EV to tweak the image and adjust the image darker or lighter. On many cameras, this can be reached by a dial or through some software in the menus. But how is this related to the pocket? Well, the first thing we need to realize is that the pocket, just like iPhone and action cameras, have a fixed aperture, so it can't change. The Pocket 3 has a fixed aperture of f2.0, so that means we only have two other dials to adjust exposure, shutter speed and the ISO. What happens in bright environments if shooting outside, for example? We know we have a fixed aperture, so that can't be adjusted. The camera will lower the ISO value as it's bright and doesn't need to amplify the light hitting the sensor, so the only other dial is a shutter which the camera will adjust to a faster speed to limit the amount of light coming into the camera, making the image darker. So how would we use EV on this situation? Well, maybe we decide that the camera has adjusted the image too dark for our liking. This is where we can take creative control. So we can increase the brightness to plus one using the EV slider. When we do this, the camera will decrease the shutter speed to increase the brightness of the scene slightly. What about shooting in a dark environment. If shooting inside, let's say we are shooting at 24 frames per second, unless you've locked the shutter value speed, the camera will slow the shutter speed down to increase light. However, the lowest value it can get to for 24 frames per second is 1 over 25. It can't go any further, otherwise the shutter will be open all of the time. So now, with the shutter at as far as it can go, it'll increase ISO to amplify the light levels on the sensor. But remember, if you increase the ISO level too much, it'll also introduce noise and grain in the video. So EV is a tool you can use to increase or decrease exposure to lighten the dark in your image beyond what the camera thinks is the best value. So now we understand the basic principle. Let's take a look at using the EV now in real world situations.